What's going on you guys, the Motorcycle Boss. This time we are going to be doing the uh, clutch switch. What's going on basically is if I am in gear and I have my clutch pulled in, the bike will not start, even with the kickstand up. I have to be in neutral in order for that to happen. There is a safety switch on the clutch lever I'll show you in a second that's supposed to allow you to start the bike in gear with the clutch pulled in. And because that's malfunctioning, that's why I'm going to replace it because uh, it can be a safety hazard. So let's get to it. I'm gonna take my ram mount off first. Have that connected to my lever mount. So we're gonna take these off. I'm going to set these aside. And now, we're going to take a look at this housing. If you take a look at this switch, this bolt and that bolt are actually holding this entire housing uh, together. And there's one electrical connector here. And then right here is the actual switch portion that when you pull the lever this button sticks out and as you can see right here there is some damage the spring that's been applying pressure to this is snapping right here the plastic is splitting and maybe the contacts inside are corroded because it's no longer responding so the whole purpose of this switch is to notice when the clutch is being pulled in or not it is basically a safety switch so for instance if you are in first gear, you should still be able to pull the clutch in and start the bike, if as long as the clutch is pulled in, even if you're in gear. That's the way these are set. Uh, Kawasaki's are set up. However, this one's malfunctioning, so whenever I am in first gear and I pull the clutch in, it's not registering the clutch is pulled in and it won't start. And this is especially important if you're in the middle of traffic, you try to take off and then the bike stalls and you're in gear you should be able to have the clutch pulled in and immediately start it back up and take off, but it's no longer allowing you to. So that can be a safety hazard. And that's why I'm making this a priority to switch this out. So taking this apart is pretty easy. You have the electrical connector right here and this will just pull apart like that. Then you're going to have two screws one here, I recommend using JIS screwdrivers, like I have this vessel here. And it gets that. And then as you pull this last one off, the spring pressure on the switch might try to get it to shoot out. So just hold some pressure there. And we'll back this one out. So we'll take those screws out. right off and I'll show you the difference between the old one and the new one you can tell between these two this is the new one and this is the old one right here this one has that crack I was talking about and then you can see this split right there as well this one doesn't have any of those issues but it seems like uh, these little prongs right here kind of they're a little bit different between the two so maybe because uh, these are OEM parts so Looks like they might have just changed the design up just a hair, but this is direct re uh, direct replacement, and then we'll test it afterwards. It does seem pretty dirty, so just want to kind of wipe it up just a little bit. So our old bolts had some Loctite on them. I'm going to just get a tad bit more. Just put the tiniest amount of Loctite on those. I'll do the same thing for the other one. To get this on, we just have to, right here in this plate, that is the bar that basically activates the switch. You're gonna have a little pin right here that goes in this hole right here to locate it. So we push in and then we push down. 
make sure we get that pin lined up. So, come on. There we go. So we're gonna hold down on it. We don't need this super tight. I'm just gonna get it enough to where it will stay in place. And I'm gonna get the other screw. Just put a tiny bit of Loctite on it. Okay, that's a lot more than I wanted to. Wipe some of that off. Drop it in there. Should already be lined up. Now you just have to get this snug. You don't have to get it very tight. The Loctite will do the rest. Okay, so it should be good there. We'll reconnect our electrical connector. And we're good to put it back on the bike. We're gonna put this back on. Now before I throw this back on, I don't know if you can see it, uh, but there is a very, very tiny little divot, very tiny divot on the handlebar. And that is what the manufacturer set on many different, uh, many different manufacturers set that. And that is where you will put the end of this right here to line up with that dot. And that's giving you the accurate placement and angle of the lever. I have mine set a little bit lower because that's my, my own preference. But just that way, if yours is already set up from the factory that way, you can get it back to the original placement. The other thing would be to get these, uh, get these bolts up a little snug, then sit on the bike, feel where, it's, it's, where it feels the most comfortable to you, and then set it by tightening the bolts down. There is a torque spec for these, however, you don't necessarily need it, but I do advise it if you feel like you do need it. Now for my bike, I like to have mine set right about there is actually, right? Right there is actually just about perfect. So I'm gonna set mine right there. And we'll just, Cinch this down. There you go. Now we will test. All right, so the clutch switch is taken care of. And now it's, as you saw on the video, it's working exactly the way it's supposed to. So now I don't have to worry about ever getting stuck in the middle of an intersection, not being able to start it without being in, uh, in neutral. So it doesn't happen very often, but you never know. So I definitely appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the video. I hope this was able to help some of you or at least one person. So that way you understand why your bike is no longer starting with the clutch in while you're in gear. That's most likely going to be the reason behind it. So definitely if you liked the video, please hit that like button, put a comment down, subscribe if you haven't, the whole point of my channel is to help you guys save money either by diagnos diagnosing something, fixing something yourself, and trying to keep your bike away from the dealership. So I hope that was able to help you. Definitely appreciate you guys taking the time to look at it, and I'll see you guys in the next video.